Yeah, and the let's take the 25 year old model and make it worse award goes to WRC Generations. Hey everybody, in today's video I will look at many simulators, mentally losing count, how the throttle model works. And you might be wondering, what do you mean? Well, what happens to the engine when we apply a bit of throttle, and a bit more, and a little bit more, and then full throttle. Obviously full throttle we get the full power, but what happens in between? It's a fairly essential piece in a simulator, because out of a corner you might not always want to start flat out, you might want to feed the throttle in. It's very important to know what the physics engine does to the engine torque and the revs when you apply that throttle. We will see that quite a few of the modern sims still use a model that I think originates like 25 years ago. It's very old model, very simple model. We will actually make that model in a spreadsheet. Yeah, you, you know who you're looking at. Um, and this very simple model, mm, I don't think is that great, yet still used by many modern sims, including ones you might not expect. A few sims do a bit of a better job, we will look at them too. And one sim takes sort of the comedy award, we'll look at that as well. Before we dive into the charts and stuff, I want to explain what an engine torque curve looks like and what we are looking at in general. And then I will dive into each sim and talk about pros and cons and, and how they work. I think you've all probably seen a torque curve at one point in a sim maybe or online, or maybe you dyno your own car. It's a curve here, so this, this flatter one with RPM of the engine horizontal and the torque vertical. So you can look up each RPM, you get a certain torque out of the engine and of course that moves the car forward. This curve is for power and this one is for torque. We are looking at torque curves today or the equivalent of that. So we see at full throttle we get up to 420 foot-pounds of, of torque on this engine. That's great. However, there's also engine braking when we let go of the throttle. Let's say we do this dyno run, we are at 6500 RPM, we let go of the throttle, the engine has to go back to zero. That means there's a braking torque, a negative torque. So we do this dyno run, we let go of the throttle. It's not shown here, but what will happen is the torque will go negative, something like this, and then, I don't know, something like that. Without any throttle, there is a negative torque. So basically, the engine behaves somewhere between this bottom curve, engine braking with no throttle, and this upper curve here, full throttle. But how do sims fill the gap? This is zero throttle, full throttle, what about 50% or 20 or 60 or 80? How does that work? What does it look like? A model used in, in quite a few sims, even today we will see later, is a really really simple model. We've seen that we have a curve when we are full throttle and we have a curve when we are uh, zero throttle. How do a lot of sims do it? It's so simple, I think I can do it live uh, on a video here. So we have 0% throttle, 100% throttle. What we do is we want to know 50% throttle. That means we do the minimum plus the difference times the throttle. So the minimum plus the difference, that means this minus that times this. Bracket close. Boom, there we are. And we drag it down. This is your engine model for a whole bunch of simulators since about the turn of the century. So 50%, what about 20%? And we see at 20% we don't have a lot of torque and it drops below zero. So the engine will rev to 5,300-ish RPM and then it will sort of no longer rev. Uh, but if we go 80% throttle, we end up there. 60% throttle, we end up there. You know, that's the throttle model used in a whole lot of sims. It's extremely simple. It's somewhat effective, but is it correct? Well, that's a whole nother story. Let's look at the sims now. One more thing actually, before we look at the sims, although we are looking at a sim, how do I get these numbers out of the sim? Well, you need a really good pedal set with some nice software, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. And then you can basically plot a few different ways. If the sim has a MoTeC telemetry plugin, you can use the data there. You can even record a video at 60 FPS and look at the onboard, uh, the HUD, get the refs and versus time, or you do an acceleration run with the car in first gear, you accelerate if you don't get wheel spin at least. You can get a different sort of acceleration of the car, speed of the car, uh, how fast it accelerates at, at how many RPM. You can kind of work back to the torque curve, but this method isn't perfect. So everything I will show below is of course, there has to be a disclaimer. Should have put that on, on the front some, somewhere, but 
I'll do it here. Disclaimer, obviously I'm looking at many sims. I only basically look at one or two cars, maybe in each sim. Maybe the sim has a different model for a different car. I don't know. There is a big tolerance, big-ish tolerance on how I get the data, especially if I had to rely on a video and uh, it, it was quite tedious, spent most of the day doing that. It was a bit of work, so there is a tolerance on it, but I think we can still see the general model that's applied. So with that out of the way, Live for Speed, very old game of course. Uh, here we have that lower curve, zero throttle. Then we have 20% throttle, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%. This was done with a video, so there isn't super accurate accuracy here. It's only 60 hertz. Uh, and the engine revs up quite fast, so there are some tolerances. But in general, you can kind of see what happens. It looks quite a bit for every 20%. It sort of scales between these two extreme curves a bit like we've seen in this very simple model. Maybe this yellow one is a bit higher, but again, that's tolerance. So this is sort of the general look and feel of this. Live for Speed 2002. Richard Burns Rally, where I got the data from actual uh, telemetry. Ignore the little itty bitty peaks. Here we see basically the same thing again. Engine braking here, 20%, 40, 60, 80, 100. Uh, I started this at the higher rev, so you can basically continue this line like that. So this again is the same model as we've ma made here. And it probably was the same in Live for Speed as well. Okay, so this is 2004. Here we have the Richard Burns rally curves versus an RF1, the R Factor 1 model. And we can see R Factor 1, where we may have the same engine curves as Richard Burns rally, I got them out of the files, and then apply the R Factor 1 throttle model, we get exactly the dotted lines are Richard Burns rally, and the continuous lines are R Factor 1, exactly the same. So R Factor 1 is exactly this, what we've made in a minute in Excel. As the Corsa, it was a little tricky to get the data, I think there is a Motec plugin, but this was good enough. It's a it's the same, but a little different. So we have the engine braking as expected, but then 20% is fairly high. So the lines are a bit closer together. They're sort of still like vertically offset, a bit like this, but it's almost as if the 20% throttle in a set of Corsa is more like 40% throttle in all the other games. So this looks to me like I said, the Corsa has sort of the same model, but maybe more sensitivity. So the first throttle percentages move you up more than the other games so far. But it's still reminiscent of that model with maybe sensitivity applied. Again, disclaimer, tested two cars in a set of Corsa with a video method. It's not perfect, but it seems to point into that direction. Getting to the more modern titles, here we have Race Room, also done with video, it's a bit tricky. For all these cars I took, I think normally aspirated cars, but here I think this is a turbo car, but I went in first gear, so I think there was turbo boost. Again, there are some tolerances, we are looking at the big picture. Race room, naturally aspirated V8. We see basically the same thing, engine braking. Well, the car didn't really drive at 20% throttle. Uh, so it's about zero there. And 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%. 100%. We still, we sort of get that model that we see fills in the blank sort of in between spaced, evenly spaced with some tolerances. It seems to have the same model. Maybe because originally uh, Razor Room was based on the same uh, physics engine as R-Factor or maybe GTR when they split off. So again, very similar. This might be a controversial one. iRacing has exactly the same model on the Hurricane GT3 that I tested than what we've seen here. This sim mo simple model, this simple equation that takes a minute to do. I did expect more, to be honest, from, from iRacing, but it is exactly the same. So here we have the zero and at 20% throttle we get very little torque and we reach 4500 rpm and then we're sort of evenly spaced torque curves, engine braking 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So still this 25 year old model used in iRacing. Competizione! It seems to use exactly the same model again, unlike as the Corsa which had maybe some sensitivity apply higher sensitivity. This seems far more linear. Of course, only one car checked in the Corsa, maybe they do it differently. They may also have some engine brake mapping because the engine braking, you would expect it to go up at higher revs. So maybe they've mapped some engine braking in there. Really the, the same sort of model, zero engine braking here. And then here's the zero uh, torque line, 20%. We get a little itty bitty bit of, of torque, revving almost to 7,000. And then we have sort of linear space. So all these games use effectively the same very simple model. Now we get to the outliers, like the, the 
probably positive uh, exceptions to this rule R factor 2 here we see a way 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 different shape look here we have the, the engine braking as we expect here is the zero line so we have engine braking look at 20% it starts very high and then sort of drops off 40% boom it's, it's very high and drops off 60% almost full torque at 60% throttle we have basically full torque at 4000 rpm and then it drops 80% basically full torque until five and a half ish and then it drops and at 100% throttle we get the top line just look how different evenly spaced here down sloping lines here very very different AMS here we have that Richard Burns engine again but here I've applied the things we did with AMS 1 so now you can see as well that what used to be 20% is this dotted line barely above the zero here has now become this red line so we have a bunch more torque at 20% throttle but when the revs rise really high we only go to 6500 there's no torque anymore so it's more downslope it starts higher but it's more downsloping so 20% look at that difference here it's huge AMS2 uses the same system as AMS1 I didn't measure it it should be the same beam and G I had high hopes for it and although I, it was a bit tricky to uh, do a video and, and record it and 100% seemed a bit the same like the 80% which could be true but this looks good as well it's just a, a road car with 20% being here 40% more you know you get this down sloping and this initial slope changes and this looks very uh, decent so yeah beam and G scores uh, pretty good points here we have to talk about WRC generations and I would assume all the WRC games before it it might look like we have that that spacing that we saw in the very simple model evenly spaced 20% 40% 60% but something is going on something weird is going on and I don't understand why and how they did it you think Niels why did you, didn't you draw this line further further to there or, or, or here it doesn't do it for some reason not only did WRC uh, the, the devs decide to copy the very old maybe not great throttle model that we've seen in so many other games it applies a hard rev limit I don't know why it doesn't make any sense to me at part throttle so at 40% throttle we can only reach well let's say this is 7500 rpm I took the Porsche it's a normally aspirated car we can only reach 3600 rpm so we have torque no more torque it's a hard limit somehow and then at 60% we apply throttle we get some torque nice 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 until 5000 rpm boom no more torque zero acceleration and then at 80% throttle, oh yeah, we have all the torque until 6000 RPM, boom, nothing. And of course at full throttle, uh, this is the rev limit here, so that's where you expect to end. This is extremely weird, not only did they copy a mediocre way of doing it, and they somehow made it worse with that weird rev limit. So let me paint a picture of what happens, you're at 60% throttle out of slippery hairpin, and the car is accelerating because we have a good amount of torque here, that's pretty nice. But that acceleration suddenly stops if we keep the throttle constant so we have to be moving the throttle forward uh, as well just to keep accelerating it's really weird you would expect this to gradually drop off you know you wouldn't expect it to stop all of a sudden that means the only way we can be here is full throttle there's no gentle way to accelerate to the red line, only with full throttle. It's, it, I, it boggles the mind, I don't know how they managed to do it, but this is really bad. It's even worse than uh, what you could allegedly say is a pretty mediocre model still used by many sims. So, very, very strange. And here in summary, uh, what we've seen. So, I think the first model was prior to 2002, but it shows that not only are the old games where you uh, end of life end of development uh, well differ speed isn't actually of course but really old games had that simple model so the course ahead it probably with more sensitivity 
uh, race room, but I racing race room instead of course a competition. Now they still use that simple model that's probably 25 years old. It's not a problem if that model is old and simple if it does the job, but I don't think it just does the job all that well. And highly likely to be better, R Factor 2, 2013 Beam NG. I don't know if they started with this better model uh, right from launch. And AMS 1 and 2. Well, yeah, and the let's take the 25 year old model and make it worse award goes to WRC Generations. Is there anything to conclude? Any words of wisdom which you expect from. Well, maybe from me. A long time ago, it was really difficult to find any sort of data for this. But also, I want to stress that all the sims here, and I've said this a few times before, most of the sims here, they try to make the best, most realistic sim they can within the limitations of the available data and even iRacing, even RF2, even ACC, they do not get all the data. All the data does not exist. Teams don't have it. Manufacturers might not even have it. If there is data, there's tolerances on them. I've said that a few times in videos. There is no magic data for everything. It's simply not true. A marketing department can claim th there is, but in real life, there is no such thing. What you need is smart people with enough time and skill and a bit of data filling in the blanks and doing their best. For the longest time, that simple model that we've discussed and I've explained how it works, seemed to do the job. However, these days it's a minute of Google and you have some other shapes. And already the first one, I don't know if this is from a model, it could still be uh, not real, or from an actual car, but here we see those down sloping lines. This might also be completely fictional, I don't know, but this shows something very different to what we've seen here. So I don't understand these days, it's, it is so easy to Google at least to get a rough idea. This doesn't mean you have the data for your Huracan GT3 for iRacing, and they don't get that data obviously. But you can fill in the blanks probably better than with that really old model. So yeah, I do think I have the right to be a bit critical about the sim devs who maintain that very old model. With these days you can fairly easily find indications of how it might be. Still no data, that still means you have to be smart and you have to figure out what it would look like, but it's probably no longer that simple model. The implications, however, are pretty severe. So here we have in my spreadsheet model for AMS, where we can do anything. We can make the old model, we can do something allegedly better. But just look what happens is if we have the correct curve, maybe a reasonable, corrector, less wrong curve, or the old fashioned way. Just look how these curves for part throttle 80%, 60, 40, 20, 0, how that changes. And imagine applying the throttle somewhere with these curves. You get a whole different torque at any RPM. You get a different torque than with the old model. And what's especially interesting is, let's say you get a bunch of wheel spin from 5000 RPM. With the old model, if you keep your throttle constant, the torque almost stays constant. So we get wheel spin from about 200 newton meters of torque, 5000 RPM. Let's, uh, let's see what happens there. It's almost the same as do having 60% throttle with the better model. But you see, when the revs rise, the torque drops. So we start at less throttle, and, when we, and should we get wheel spin there, because of this downsloping line, that wheel spin sort of stops, because we lose torque a bit quicker, so let's compare the blue line that will appear now, almost horizontal, with the purple line that we see here, slopes down. Downsloping means wheel spin will not get worse as quickly. Plus, feeding the throttle in out of a hairpin, we might, we might start at 40% throttle here to get 150 at 4000 uh, RPM. And with the old model, in order to get 150 at 4000 RPM, we need more, we need about 70% throttle to get that same acceleration that we got with 40% throttle with the better model. So what happens with all these old games and maybe a, well, some of these, pff, I'm blown away by how it's still possible that modern Sims use this, but how what happens with these titles that still use this model is you have to start out of the corner with a lot more throttle than you might expect. So you're just feeding in the last 20-30%. But with a better model in RF2 or an AMS, 
uh, feeding in that throttle will be more direct at low RPM. So you might start at 30% and then feed it in. And of course, the more throttle you have to apply, the more control you have over the acceleration of the car. In some ways, the old games, and well, I'm still, I'm saying it, these modern games with that mediocre model are easy to drive. You can get away with a lot of throttle because the engine doesn't respond maybe realistically and it's easy to drive, but everything happens in that last 25% throttle a lot of the time instead of feeding it in generally. The biggest problem I have with it is that, of course, since so many sims use this model that's maybe not quite right, sim races, we are so used to the possibly not quite correct way that this is done. So we are so used to, well, let's not have 600% throttle, to these offset lines that if you give us a sim with better response, we might instinctively apply too much throttle out of corner exit and we get snap oversteer and, and, and the rear brakes loose. So you have to train yourself to apply the throttle more, more gradually. And this is what I also said with AMS when we had this improvement. Although again, there's no data, perhaps we are doing it wrong still, but let's say it was an improvement. It's the culture shock of people not being used to it, that they say, oh, the throttle is too sensitive. Not realizing that they have sort of muscle memory applying 80% throttle out of a hairpin with a big V8, what do you expect? Yeah, I think it's it's a bit disappointing that some of the modern sims still use the old model. And I debated with myself, should I make a video about it or not? I'm not currently working for any sim. I get annoyed when, when the throttle doesn't work the way I think it should work. So hopefully sim developers, uh, physics guys, they are known to be maybe a little stubborn and, and what are you looking at? Who are you looking at? I don't know. So I don't know, this is, the info is out there. I hope they improve their model. And also finally, it's maybe a wake up call. Again, I've said it before, don't expect your Sims, even no matter how much you love them or how much you pay for them to be all real data. I've said it many times before, real data is always limited, even to Assetto Corsa. When they work with the teams, they get lots of stuff, but not everything, everything doesn't exist. I racing have to make things up. AMS, we have to make things up as well. There is no all data and only in a marketing department that it exists. And this is a good example of an ancient model still being used today. And I think it should improve from now on. And I hope the devs do, if you do, Great, I look forward to uh, having more enjoyment out of uh, out of The Sims. If you think I'm stupid, well, you're probably right, so you can also ignore me. Anyway, I think that's about it. I uh, hope that was interesting and uh, maybe uh, yeah, somewhat enlightening, both for the industry and also for you uh, gamers to not expect your Sims to be perfect, because they are not. All right, bye-bye.